Thank you, Eric. So carrying on here, I got started this a couple years ago. Oh, whoops, how do I click? I knew I have this problem on your computer. OK, uh, I got this uh, light fixture made in New Zealand and decided to try figure out whether it was three colorable. And my wife is a coloring theory person. So she would sit in the living room trying to prove it was not three colorable. And I would use code to prove it was. And, and uh, I won out. And then, of course, that got me started on how to use good algorithms to decide if all polyhedra are three or four colorable. And then I carried on to all planar graphs and all graphs. I, my mission was to find the chromatic number of all the graphs in graph data. Um, so I developed some algorithms. And as you can see, we have a hun uh, there's 7,000 graphs. And we have 100% of them resolved for whether they're Hamiltonian. Now actually, Wolfram had that already for all but one or two. But I could handle the last one or two using, of all things, the Concord Traveling Salesman software, which will be in Mathematica in the next version. This is quite a phenomenal story of how they will have world-class traveling salesman code, which also can be used to find Hamilton cycles. Hamilton decompositions. We have 100% of them. Hamilton connected, 100% of them. Whether a graph is perfect or imperfect, Eric and me working on that, 100% of them. Not a single one missing for those properties. Uh, and these are all NP-complete or NP-hard problems. Um, Hamilton decomposition is a decomposition of the edges of a graph um, into Hamilton cycles. So that's an example there. You see there's a red Hamilton cycle and a blue Hamilton cycle. It has degree 4. So there are two Hamilton cycles. I assume you know what the chromatic number is. And we have 99.7% of those, with help, I should say, from someone called Rob Pratt in North Carolina. Fractional chromatic numbers, actually it's a little easier, but we seem to have fewer of them. Um, clique cover number is interesting. Covering a graph with complete subgraphs, that's simply the chromatic number of the complement. And that will be as a property in a current version, now we have 99.9% .9 of those. Okay, that's a lot of work <laughs> to get those things, to get that empty set to show <laughs> the huge amount of work. Um, this is a fractional coloring of the United States. Uh, I won't explain what it is, but I will say the United States is not four colorable, it's actually 3.5 colorable. Uh, the main algorithmic ideas, all right, for Hamiltonian, there's a built in function, but I already said traveling salesman code uh, can do it quite well. And the better your find Hamiltonian cycle is, the better you can do other things. So Hamilton connected, that means from any one point in the graph to any other, you can get there by a Hamiltonian path. Um, so that can be done. I already told you what Hamilton decompositions are. Oh, edge colorings are interesting. Um, to get an edge coloring for a graph, there are some special algorithms for that. Um, I've worked quite hard on that. And we also have that for 100% of the graphs and graph data. We can tell you the edge chromatic number. Uh, up to graphs with 300,000 edges. So obviously you don't just form the line graph and try to do vertex coloring on the 300,000 vertex. It's much easier. But still, it's quite an effort. This is, an, I mentioned in another talk, this is the Blossom algorithm, which is now in Mathematica. It's pretty impressive. This algorithm, this find independent edge set, is, uh, will find a maximum matching in a weighted graph. This is just an example, a quarter of a second to find a maximum matching for a complete graph on 700 vertices, where every one of the edges is given some random weight. So it finds a way to match things up to maximize the weight. That has a lot of applications. It's a very famous algorithm. I've been asking Mathematica to get it in there for about 10 years. So I've sort of forgotten why I needed it exactly by now, but it is in there. That's the famous Edmonds polynomial time algorithm. Right, let me try to rip through some of this stuff. Uh, so we discover things, OK? Here's maybe what I feel is my most interesting discovery here. There's a very famous conjecture that says all vertex transitive graphs are Hamiltonian. It goes back to Lovas. It's a surprising conjecture. There are five small counterexamples, well known. Those are vertex transitive. They're not Hamiltonian. And that's it. So that's the conjecture. A lot of work on this conjecture. In my fooling around, um, I found that all vertex transitive graphs were more than Hamiltonian. They all had Hamiltonian decompositions even, except for one that line graph of the Peterson graph. And they're all Hamilton connected, except for one, which Hamilton would have known about, because this is the basis of his famous icosian game. And that's the dodecahedral graph. Well, maybe it's not the basis of his icosian. Wait, they're dual. Maybe it is. <laughs> anyway, um, that dodecahedral graph is vertex transitive and not Hamilton connected. But those are the only ones. 
I checked the whole database, which only has 7,000 graphs, and only 1,600 of them are vertex transitive. So I checked these conjectures. Um, Eric showed a graph of how the number of graphs and graph data grows. But he has many more graphs that he knows about that he did not put in graph data. He could easily make that grow. Maybe he should. For example, there's a database by Gordon Royal in Australia of 100,000. Here's, here's the link to it. 100,000, all the vertex transitive graphs with 30 or fewer vertices. And Eric, it's in something called G6 format, which I don't really know what that is. But Eric kindly put it in Mathematica format. So here you see. Uh, you're absolutely right, import. Mathematica can read G6, fair enough. So here, for example, are all the graphs on 21 vertices that are vertex transitive. These are not in graph data. Eric could put them in and his graph could skyrocket. In any case, it was uh, a very easy exercise to take those 100,000 graphs and check my two conjectures on them. And there's no counterexamples. Well, that seems pretty solid. I mean, it's obviously not a proof, but that's 100,000 examples. 30 vertices, a few small examples, which you sort of expect. So I like those conjectures, obviously. OK, let me just zip on here. New theorems. Yeah, we discovered a lot of new theorems. Um, the Keller graph is an interesting one. I won't tell you what the graph is, but it's tied to a very interesting conjecture. The conjecture, one minute. The conjecture says that whenever you tile, Rn with rectangles, there have to be two that meet edge to edge. That's true in R2. There's a tiling of squares, and you see two of them meet edge to edge. It's open only in R7. In R8 and beyond, you can find tilings that do not have a cube meeting edge to edge. It's related to the Keller graph. I proved some properties of the Keller graphs. Um, Discovered with all of these things are discovered with computation. Here's one that's sort of nice because it's sort of solving a thousand year old problem in a way. A Knight's Tour. Uh, where's my demo here? I'm just having trouble with your mouse. All this is hardwired data, which you don't need to see. Close. Yeah. Maybe you could help me here a little bit. It's just gonna be a my trackpad's a little idiosyncratic. Just get me to the bottom. I think that's it. This oh. is closed. I'll figure it out. Okay, sorry. God, but your shift button has a hole in it. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. Never put a file on someone else's computer. Why is my night tour demo? Yeah, somewhere there there's a demo. Okay. I think it's right in there. Oh, it's because you've got these hidden. It's, it's right in there. It's because we have hidden. Yes, yes, thank you. Oh, was that it? Yep. I don't, OK, well, let me. So, so night, a very famous problem, you know, to do night's tours. Uh, this shows you how you can find a path that goes from any point to any other. And I was able to prove uh, with a student, uh, characterize which night's graphs uh, on M, N boards are such that you can go from any white square to a black square. You can't go from a white square to a white square. So this is not Hamilton connected. It's called Hamilton laceable because it's a bipartite graph. And this little demo here just encodes them all so you can see all. There are people who've tried to memorize this so they could do a magic trick, right? You pick two points and I'll find the Knights tour from one to the other. It's not so easy. Um, I've been working on hex chess. There are lots of interesting graphs on hex chess. We discovered some interesting things. Um, Eric will put these graphs in Mathematica. Queen's graphs. We discovered some interesting things. Oh, here's a big surprise. OK. Um, here's a triangular grid graph on the left. And it was well known that the triangular grid graph can be dominated by seven points. That was a bit of a surprise. You see the seven points on the left that dominate it. Um, the rest after seven just followed a simple inductive pattern, but Rob Pratt found 20. Uh, the 20 case was coverable by, by nine. That broke the pattern. So that was just discovered last week or so, that there are nine points covering the uh, grid graph there. That's the domination number, which is that one of your properties? It will be. It, it, sh it should be, I guess. Um, well, we always like to show what we're working on this minute, so I'll just, I'll just do that now. Even though it's not graph theory, I can't resist. 
Um, in the 1950s, it was proven that you cannot chain regular tetrahedra together so that the last regular tetrahedron touches the first, the first and makes a closed loop. Over the summer, I found this string, this sequence that comes close. So then it was just a matter of um, shifting the error around so I could get a cheating version of this. So I added 1% error to each. There we go. So this is an impossible figure. Ulysses is going to help me figure out how to print this cheaply so I can do it in silver or something. I'm doing it in plastic now on a 3D printing machine. Um, couldn't resist throwing that in. Uh, I guess I'll stop. We're all a bit rushed. But of course, if you, any of you care deeply about graphs, Eric and I are here today, tomorrow, etc. Thank you. Okay, uh, uh, let me try to answer the question. So, so if you go to graph data of the Peterson graph, yeah, Danish guy, right? In version 10, there's command completion for strings. That's a great thing. Um, you, get a, you just get a graph object. Now, if you want to see, that's just, so we give that a name, G. That's just a graph. Um, but for any graph, you can do things like edge list of G. Uh-oh. Sorry. Thank you. So you can do edge list of G. That will help you get the edges. So you can make some changes to it or, or something. Or you can get the location of the points. This is quite useful, actually. Graph embedding of G tells you the location of where those vertices were. So y yes, you can dig into the graph and get everything about it. I, I think that. But you cannot do it with a mouse or something. You're, uh, but but there's, it's generated by mathematical code, the graph, isn't it? Sure. So can I see the code? In input form of G, I guess. Uh, well, the, it's, it's a, a graph, graph object, object. yes. Um, so graph is a, is a function in Mathematica.